Hey, I'm at Connor Bayou. It's really, really beautiful here and peaceful. I'm on a literal bayou right now, out on a little dock or deck. I don't know what you would call it. <laughs> Here's a song.
been a long 20 years. <laughs> Nursing wounds, believing that that was saving me. There are shortcuts. <laughs> I never knew. I think that well-intentioned people are often trying to save people from drowning spiritually, mentally, emotionally. And they're throwing them pat cliches that don't resonate. And so then people walk away and decide to learn through their own experience. And that's, I'm one of those people. I'm probably older than you. Most of the people who follow me are younger than me, but maybe some, actually a few people are much older than me. So it's, it's possible to avoid experiential wisdom and just inherit taught wisdom. And then what I think I thought taught wisdom would do for me is make me just another robot puppet of the institutions and systems. And I didn't even mind that as a kid. I liked getting A's and doing well in school, but I thought that just in inheriting someone's taught wisdom would make me just vapid and empty and just a reciter of lines. And I wanted to live my life, you know, learn on my own. But what they don't tell you, or maybe what they exactly do try to tell you, is that living on your own, A, might not lead to the results of the same taught wisdom. You know, like if you want to never brush your teeth and then end up with rotted teeth and all that pain, go right ahead. But you might catch it later, like, oh, I learned at such and such age to start taking care of it, but then your teeth are partly rotten. That's just a metaphor. Right? <laughs> That's kind of a gross one. But, you know, conversely, your elders tell you, hey, if you brush your teeth, this is currently what's working, and we know these 90-year-olds who do this, 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 and they don't have dentures, or who knows what. I don't know. I, I gotta stop with the teeth metaphor because I don't really understand it <laughs> well enough. I don't know what, what leads to what exactly, but that's an example of inherited wisdom, I think, or taught wisdom. You know, so if someone tries to tell you that these choices often lead to this and these choices often lead to that and you want that and maybe they say to you well this over here could lead to that but it might not and it might be a mess you know then that's on you then to take that risk and I guess I yeah maybe some of it comes from having had influence when influences when I was younger who didn't just try to pass on wisdom, they also tried to pass on fear. Like, oh, be careful of this, be careful of this. This might go wrong, don't send that contract, don't do this thing, this could be bad. You know, and there wasn't as much, there wasn't an equal balance of, but this could also be good. This could be a good risk. Almost every famous person has some weird story of like being discovered on the street and then their parents being like, well, let's up and move to LA and take this random risk, you know? And I'm not saying go do that, but I'm just saying like, there has to be, for all the fear of, what kinds of terrible things could go wrong on some sort of bright and shiny and big and weird path that maybe you're attracted to. There, there's the what could go wrong, but there, you want to make sure you're also adding in but what could go right, because that's pretty cool. And you kind of want to leave it as equal, otherwise you're just being negative. My solution to this complicated and busy and crazy and opinionated and competitive world is just to do things by myself, kind of in this little corner of the internet. <laughs> so, um, you know, and I, I was in a band, or we're still a band, but you know, quarantine and we haven't done anything in a while. Um, and that's harder, you know? Anytime you get more people involved in something, you have more more preferences and more more cooks in the kitchen. So But all the successful things I've ever seen seem to focus on what could go right. Not what could go wrong, but what could go right. Like this is cool, this is fun. We're we're playing, we're experimenting with our lives, we're doing things. But back to my original point, which was more about spiritual truths than anything. I was talking more about attraction to spirituality or light light and dark as like I was talking about in my last really weird video. Um, you know, dark meaning like emptiness, 
and light meaning like fullness of something like uh, the yin yang symbol God and the emptiness that God filled I mean it's it's all the allness versus some other I don't even know I mean in the Bible it's a snake I it, who knows what the, what kinds of influences are out there in the world that want to mess with your joy that want to create depression and anxiety and all kinds of things rather than just allowing you to feel your natural inherited joy and listen to your elders who show you the path towards those ways of revering each other and loving each other and honoring each other and honoring emotions but depression and anxiety are not like sadness or grief they're not like those it's it's something else. It's an epidemic. It's its own, like, the light and the dark, the gloriousness of the universe and its creator is like, it's one thing over here. And then there's this other thing that's like this slimy underbelly, like a snake or something, like a demon, I wonder, in your ear, convincing you of things that aren't true. That's depression and anxiety and illness and mental illness and all kinds of things that get a hold on people and... I guess that's what this song is about because I've spent many, many years of my life believing I had to give all of that equal value, that I had to sit in therapist's office and 12-step meetings and all kinds of places giving value and voice to the ugliest parts of what doesn't even feel like myself, the ugliest parts of what I was allowing in my own ear in my own self. Discouragement, depression, anger, hatred, judgment. It's really dark, dark things that they're not the same as, as emotions are meant to move through you like a wave, you know? Like anger, I'll bet, is supposed to be like a wave, not a, not a disorder. And whatever this is over here turns those things into big disorders and steals your life. And that song, I guess, yeah, it's like a cautionary tale, tale, but also like a come back, you know, like it's okay, you know, like, I don't know. I don't believe in evangelizing to people who don't want it. So please get, go away. I'm not even evangel. I'm not even trying to say God in the Bible only. I'm saying like, if you ever believed in.